Central Documentary Film Studios, Moscow. Women speak up for peace. In early October, 1981, when autumn put its fascinating attire on the gardens and parks of Prague, women from all over the world gathered for their Congress, capital of Czechoslovakia. the same quiet charm as Prague gave a warm welcome to its guests. The winds of change that swept the city in the past made a profound imprint on the people's memory. Prague greeted its guests with a quiet beauty of the old city and the unfading youthful hustle and bustle of the new streets and squares. The city has seen a great deal throughout its history. Another important chapter was added to its fine record when representatives of the International Women's Movement gathered here for their World Congress to discuss the burning issues of our troubled times. Among them was Frieda Braun, president of the Women's International Democratic Federation, Valentina Nikolaeva Tereshkova, chairman of the Soviet Women's Committee, Miriam Vire Tuominen, Secretary General of the Federation, Maria Kabrgelova, Chairman of the Czechoslovak Women's League, and many other participants in one of the noblest movements of our time. About a thousand delegates from 133 countries filled the hall of the Palace of Culture in Prague, where the World Congress of Women was opened in a gala ceremony. Its motto was, for equality, national independence, and peace. There is nothing dearer to women around the world than life in conditions of peace, the well-being and happiness of their children. Delegates were warmly welcomed by Gustav Husak, General Secretary of the Communist Party and President of Czechoslovakia. Heslo Svetového kongresu žen, rovnoprávnost, národní nezávislost, mír. The slogans of the Congress, said Gustav Husak, expressed the sincere aspirations of millions of women constituting more than half of mankind. People of different world views, political affiliations, religions, color and social status have now pulled their efforts in the struggle to make them a reality. This year we have moved into the second half of the United Nations sponsored International Women's Decade. Czechoslovakia wholeheartedly supports this initiative. I should like to assure you that all of our people are firmly on your side in your struggle for equality, national independence, and peace. The leader of the delegation of the Soviet Women's Committee Valentina Nikolaeva Tereshkova read out a message of cordial greetings to the Congress from the General Secretary of the Soviet Communist Party, President of the Presidium of the USSR Supreme Soviet, Leonid Brezhnev. 
The message said in part, the slogan of peace assumes particular importance at a time of heightened world tension. The concept of peace has become an all-embracing value indeed in our time. It is precisely in conditions of peace that all the hopes and aspirations of the people for a better life and the radiant future of the coming generations can become a reality. The most important task today is to do everything to prevent the nuclear arms from being used, to ward off the war danger looming over the world and to protect life itself. In her report to the Congress, the president of the Women's International Democratic Federation, Frida Brown, made this point. A Congress such as ours can influence world public opinion. Our voices will be heard by the United Nations and by governments. By united efforts, we can do a great deal about equality between men and women by condemning war, aggression, oppression, we can bring hope to the hearts of those who struggle for their rights and their freedom. By united effort, we can achieve our goal that war should be banished from our planet and a peaceful and a secure future ensured for the coming generations. Speakers called for greater cohesion among women around the world against the threat of thermonuclear destruction for the great ideals of peace and the implementation of the most cherished hopes of mankind. The delegates, who could not leave their children at home, brought them along to Prague. And while the children had a good time in a playroom, their mothers took part in the sittings of the Congress and its various committees. These women possessed both the loving tenderness of motherhood and the courage of real fighters. The problem of women's equality in society was discussed in a committee chaired by Yvonne Tolman, president of the International Federation of Women Lawyers. Speakers pointed out that in many countries, under imperialist, colonialist, and racist rule, women are denied the opportunity of taking part in the economic, political, and cultural life of their nations. Women in the capitalist countries share the sorry plight of their husbands, standing in long queues at the employment offices. Women are subjected to particularly ruthless discrimination, and they come out against employment restrictions. They demand equal pay for equal work with men, and protest against the jobs ban. The Committee on Woman and the Family was chaired by Jean-Martin Cissé, a prominent African activist of the women's movement. Speakers emphasized that peace was the main condition for preserving the family, the most important nucleus of society. War, oppression, discrimination destroy the family, and women and children are the first to suffer. Many of them, starved and sick, die at an early age in the poor districts and refugee camps, and sad is the plight of those who live in South Africa's Bantustans. Mothers have no means of subsistence and are unable to ease the suffering of their children.
in marked contrast to that is the position of women in the socialist countries, where child and family care is one of the main concerns of the state. Delegates to the Congress visited one of the several hundred kindergartens in Prague and could see for themselves the loving care accorded to the children. The committee chaired by President of the Federation of Cuban Women, Vilma Espin de Castro, discussed problems under the general heading, Women for National Independence and Development. Millions of women around the world wholeheartedly support the struggle of peoples in Asia, Africa, and Latin America against imperialism, colonialism, and neocolonialism, racism, and apartheid, against aggression and genocide. The people in Vietnam won their freedom and independence after many years of heroic struggle. They now live a full life working for the well-being and happiness of their children. Mi An Sam An, who came to the Congress from Campuchia, had this to say. Campuchian women are actively participating in building a new life, in defending their country and in developing her economy. They figure prominently in public affairs. Campuchian women are contributing a great deal to the effort of rebuilding industry and agriculture, of restoring and developing the health service and education. We are doing our best to bring up our children in a spirit of patriotism so that they should always be ready to defend their country, its freedom and independence. The children of that long-suffering country can now study in conditions of peace. They are no longer afraid that they may be killed by executioners or die of hunger. But there are still many troubles and hardships in the world. The Congress set up a special committee to consider the position of women and children in emergency situations. The committee heard numerous eyewitness accounts by delegates who denounced aggressive imperial circles for engineering conflicts and confrontations. It came out in defense of women and children living in extremely harsh conditions and expressed support for the struggle of the peoples for self-determination, national independence and peace. A delegate from Northern Ireland, Margaret Breton, made this observation. Well, it's very difficult for women and children in Northern Ireland. Uh, I think the main thing is the presence of the British Army at walking about our streets. The British government enforces emergency legislation. And this means that young children, my own daughter, she was 18. She was arrested early one morning about 6 o'clock and kept for questioning. And this is happening to a lot of young people in the nationalist areas. And then they're walking around town and the army stopped them. Of course, when Bobby Sands and the other younger strikers died, there was a lot of violence on the streets. Inmates of that horrible, long cash prison gave their young lives for their people for human rights. However, the British authorities persist in their rule of tyranny and mass reprisals. That's the reception given to the Prime Minister, Mrs. Margaret Thatcher. The committee also discussed the tragic plight of the Palestinian people. Jihan Helu, representative of the Palestinian women, addressed the Congress. Our women and children in the occupied territories also face great sufferings because of their uh, resistance to the Zionist occupation. They are uh, 
put in jails, they are uh, tortured. We have many uh, hundreds of children in the Israeli prisons. In, uh, in Lebanon, our children uh, uh, face daily bombardments of, uh, by Israel, aerial, uh, by air, land and sea. Hundreds of children have died or are wounded or handicapped in the last the bombardment. For example, in July, more than 2,500 died uh, or were wounded from civilians, Lebanese and Palestinians. Uh, Beirut, the city of uh, the capital of Lebanon, uh, 300 uh, died. Most of them are children. One child was born after the mother died. The bloodthirsty junta in El Salvador is also on a rampage and the number of its victims is growing. Marionela Garcia Villas spoke of her people's tragedy. There have been many violations of human rights in El Salvador. 33,000 civilians have been killed over the past two years. Responsibility for murder is on the security forces, the army, the paramilitary groups which are trained, equipped and supported by the army. 23% of those killed are women. 95% of the victims are young people aged from 12 to 25. The junta in El Salvador is trying to drown in blood the people's resistance with the help of the American imperialists. And as in any other oppressed country, it is the children who suffer most. However, in spite of terror and reprisals, the example of the liberated countries serves as a source of inspiration for the fighters for freedom and independence. The committee, Women for Peace and Disarmament, was chaired by Edith Ballantyne, Secretary General of the International Women's League for Peace and Freedom. Its members, delegates to the Congress, were unanimous in stating that the unprecedented arms race was having an extremely disastrous effect on the solution of such vital problems as food supplies, improvements in education and health service, and the ending of unemployment. More and more refined instruments of death are made at the initiative of those who seek to dictate their will from the position of military superiority. And all that is happening at a time when 15 million children under the age of five die of hunger every year at a time when the money spent on modernizing intercontinental missiles alone would be enough to feed 50 million children. Cheryl Craig of the United States. People are beginning to realize that the arms race presents a very present, clear, and dangerous threat to the security of the United States. And the world, like never before, is faced with the possibility of complete destruction. And, and a total setback to the civilized world as we know it. Denise Breton of France. We of the French Women's League realize the danger coming from the nuclear bomb and the nuclear war, and we are all striving to have all kinds of nuclear weapons reduced. Popular indignation is mounting against the adventurists seeking to bring down nuclear fire on our planet. People on all continents demand a ban on the neutron weapons. Gabriel Mayer Ulrich of the Federal Republic of Germany. We, together with our children and husbands, are going to see to it that the Federal Republic of Germany could make its major contribution to building peaceful Europe and the fight for universal peace. More and more people in her country are coming to realize that the arms race may lead to a catastrophe. They are coming out against nuclear blackmail in the name of life, in the name of the coming generation. Vinci Roin and Elsa Pedersen of Norway. 
through Europe against nuclear weapons. Because we are, especially women, I think, all over the world, really afraid of a nuclear weapon war. Of course, we really wish that uh, it should be peace all over the world and for everybody. And uh, now we feel that the situation is uh, so dangerous that uh, uh, women and men, of course, have to stand up and say no, and we must find a new way. People have already learned the horror of atomic bombings. The tragedy of Hiroshima and Nagasaki is not forgotten. A strong protest against the sinister plans of the nuclear war maniacs is gaining momentum on all continents. President of the Women's International Democratic Federation, Frida Brown, took part in Peace March 81. Its 1,200 kilometer route lay across five countries of Europe. The demonstrators marched with an ardent appeal to all to prevent the deployment of American missiles and foil the aggressors' criminal designs. And wherever their columns passed, they were supported by millions of people. And it is only natural that so many women have taken part in the peace march women concerned about the future of the world, the future of their children. Roland Gaillard of the International Women's Council chaired the Committee on Cooperation of Non-Governmental Organizations among themselves and within the United Nations framework. Representatives from various organizations and movements Women of different professions, convictions, and views drew up joint recommendations on the work for peace. responsibility rested on pressmen and other workers of the mass media. They were called upon to tell the truth about the lofty aims of the Congress to millions of people everywhere. And the truth finds its way to them across all barriers of misinformation and lies. Maria Helena Gaetan, the United States. Uh, certainly our military budget in the United States is now hitting us at home very hard. And I think that the American uh, working people, like me, are beginning to realize more and more uh, how that military budget is taking the bread from our tables. Women from various countries held a number of friendly meetings at the Congress. Valentina Nikolaeva Tereshkova met activists of Czechoslovakia's women's movement. She told them about the fruitful activities of Soviet women in every aspect of life, work, creative endeavor, and the upbringing of their children. There was a warm meeting between women from the Soviet Union and the Mongolian People's Republic. A delegate from the women in the Soviet Republic of Belarusia, Zinaida Ridlevskaya, in her childhood, lived through the horrors of the Nazi occupation. She spoke about the tragedy of the village of Khatin. In World War II, the Nazi invaders burned it down together with all the villagers. Many women, children, and old people perished in the flames. And it is for them that these bells toll. 
the same fate befell the Czech village of Lidice, which once stood on this plain. The Nazi vandals razed it to the ground with all its residents overnight. A moving rally was held at the monument to those killed in Lidice. Among those present were delegates to the World's Women's Congress. The meeting proclaimed this motto, for life in conditions of peace. Fanny Edelman, vice president of the Argentinian Women's League. Que por los siglos de los siglos, cada niño pueda dormir en el regazo de su madre. What I would like to see is that for all time to come, every child could sleep under the protection of its mother, that there always sound a lullaby, that there always be flowers for the loved ones. I would like joy, love and happiness to accompany the life of all nations around the world. And to make it true, we need peace, peace today, peace tomorrow, peace forever. At its closing session, the Congress adopted a declaration calling on parliaments and governments to give up the new armaments programs, to ban nuclear weapons, and to channel all of their resources into improving the people's well-being. The Congress also adopted an appeal to all women of the world to demand effective measures from their governments to prevent war and to embark on the path of peaceful negotiations. In her closing speech, Frida Brown, president of the Women's International Democratic Federation, who chaired the Congress, underlined that the World Forum had demonstrated the unbending resolve of women everywhere to bring into life the ideals of the Congress and to make every effort to achieve equality national independence and peace. Script, Rasul Gamzatov, direction, Zinaida Tuzova, camera, Igor Kuznetsov, and Ivan Filato.